Millions of Americans drink coffee every morning, maybe in the afternoon. So there's been a new study on this uh, about coffee and your genetics, which is really fascinating. So I'm Dr. Abraham Palmer and Dr. Sandra Sanchez Roger, both professors at UC San Diego, the Department of Psychiatry, involved in this study. Thank you for being with us today. Thanks uh, for having us. Of course, yes. No, we all drink our coffee. We count on it, especially when you work a morning shift. Uh, so let's talk first about why you decided to do the study. We are interested in learning why people may consume or overconsume substances ah. and why illegal and legal substances like alcohol and tobacco are hard to study. Mm. Coffee and caffeine in particular is one of the most widely psychoactive right. substances used in the world and in fact some of the viewers may be sipping on a cup of coffee right now. <laughs> I was going to say it's 7.49 I'm sure it's part of their morning routine so why people have coffee why they have more coffee than others. It's really interesting, uh, the involvement in this. So what did this study uh, teach us? What did you learn yeah. from it? So we wanted to know uh, how genes or whether genes influence the amount of coffee that people consume. Okay. And what we found is that, yes, in fact, genes oh. are influence the amount of coffee that people consume. The way we did that is we worked with the company 23andMe. So mm -hmm. 23andMe is a company that will genotype people. Right. If you give them a little bit of money, they'll send you a kit, you spit in a tube, you send it back, they get right. DNA from that. And from that DNA, they can determine your unique genetic fingerprint. Okay. Millions of sites at which people differ from one another have different DNA bases. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so and using so, 23andMe, which a lot of people use. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure a okay. lot of your customers use. Mm -hmm. And so then we had 23andMe ask people a bunch of questions. And in particular, for this study, one question, how much coffee do you consume in a day? Uh, okay. And so somebody like Sandra might answer zero because she doesn't drink coffee, okay. believe it or not. <laughs> somebody like me might answer eight because I drink lots of coffee. Okay. And then we looked to see whether or not the answers to that question, the amount of coffee that people consumed, was related to any mm. of these millions of sites where people differ. Okay. And of course, if you do lots of comparisons, your viewers can appreciate, you'd have to see a really strong pattern to believe it because you could see some kind of weak patterns just by chance. Okay. We did, in fact, see many very strong patterns that we think are significant or real effects oh. uh, that influence it. So okay. that's where we get the conclusion that, yes, in fact, your genotype your unique genetic fingerprint influences how much coffee you'll choose to drink. Okay, you can blame it on your DNA. You can. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so genes do make some people like coffee more than others. That, mm -hmm. That's the result. Definitely. That is true. Some yeah. people get surprised when we tell them that how much coffee you drink can be linked to your right. genetics, but we had good reason to suspect that genes influence how much coffee we drink. Mm. For example, genes related to metabolism. Okay. If you're able to clear out caffeine from your body very rapidly, then you may choose to drink more coffee to feel mm. the same effects, feeling Makes alert sense. and energetic. But it is important to know that there's not a gene for coffee. It's a constellation of genes and genetic variants that dictate how much coffee we will drink. Okay. Okay, so there's not one coffee gene. Exactly. <laughs> That's it's right. not that easy. That's right. <laughs> okay. And uh, as you were saying, it's true that while genes and the environment play in beautiful synchrony, whether mm -hmm. you're a coffee lover or not, well, you can partially blame your parents for it. <laughs> you can still blame your parents. Okay, I know a lot of people just love the act of coffee, making the coffee. It's a ritual in the morning, mm -hmm. which I would assume is more just kind of the, the feel-good part of why we consume certain things. Um, but yeah, to know that your body can metabolize it more is pretty interesting mm -hmm. uh, more than others. I know my husband will drink pots of coffee. I'm uh -huh. good with two a day. Okay. Um, so uh -huh. I blame my parents for that too. Yeah. Um, tell me, what else surprised you maybe about this study? Yeah. Well, so we had, in addition to the data from 23andMe, we also had a second study that others had conducted uh -huh. in the United Kingdom. Okay. And it's with a big data set called UK Biobank. Oh. They had asked a similar question, but it was a little different. They said, how much coffee do you drink? They didn't specify whether it was caffeinated or not. Oh, okay? Okay. So decaf would have counted mm. also. Mm -hmm. We saw a lot of similarities between our data set, which was US-based, and the UK data set. But there were also a lot of differences that we were able to detect. Huh. And we attribute those differences to a few things. First of all, the question was a little different, so decaf would have counted. Right. But also, the environment in the UK is different. In the UK, of course, people drink tea, famously. Right. right? And that's an alternative source of caffeine, and it also has some of the kind of ritual things that you were mm -hmm. alluding to, right? Okay. Sort of just that, you know, this is what you do in the morning, right. this is what you do at 3 o'clock, et cetera. They have tea as they, they do. They have a little bit of <laughs> yes. tea, that's right, exactly. <laughs> okay. And so, uh, people would have answered that they didn't drink much coffee because instead they're drinking tea. Makes and sense. the study doesn't really account for right. that. 
And so I think what it emphasizes is that the same genes in a different environment will behave differently. Ah. And it's just that reminder that we're all aware of as geneticists and your viewers should be aware of, which mm -hmm. is that genes aren't deterministic. Okay. Your genotype interacts with the environment that you're in. I see. It doesn't, it's not forcing you to drink the coffee, but it might make you tend to drink the coffee or tend not to okay. drink the coffee. All right. Well, thank you both <laughs> very much. I know